Welcome to the overview video for setting up a load step scenario in LoadView. The purpose of this tutorial is to provide an overview of how to set up and run a load view test using a load step curve scenario. Please be sure to watch our other videos on goal based testing and dynamically adjustable testing in LoadView. For our load step scenario, we will be setting up a transactional load test. If you are planning on conducting a transactional load test, Please make sure to review our introduction and advanced video tutorials for help with creating your script using the Every Step Web Recorder. Assuming you've already done that, the first thing we want to do is name our scenario. Make sure you give your scenario a unique and descriptive name. It is best practice to have a good naming convention in place so your scenario is easily identifiable and distinguishable from other test scenarios if you need to run multiple tests. Our next step is our task. This will display the script that you recorded using the Every Step Web Recorder. Here you will also see the user behavior settings. User behavior settings are important to ensure the simulated user behaviors align with the requirements of your load test or stress test. You can see we have the options of using the default normal delay, which most closely mimics a true user experience. You can go even deeper to customize any of these delays as you see fit. The next configuration we want to look at is creating our execution plan. At this step we have a lot of freedom with what we can do. We can create any load step execution plan that you want. If you're not sure on what you need to configure for your scenario, please make sure you connect with one of our support staff to take you through the process. For this overview, we are going to start with 10 users. We'll then raise the number of concurrent users by one additional user every minute for 10 minutes. We can also raise the number of concurrent users by another 5 users a minute for the next 5 minutes. From here we want to look at our zone configuration. Our LoadView platform allows you to mimic user traffic from regions across the United States or across the globe. For example, if 70% of your users come from the East Coast and the rest of your users come from all over the United States, what we can do is configure our scenario that 70% of our load will be generated from the East Coast. You can easily set these zones to reflect what your actual user traffic looks like. Now that we have our execution scenario and zones configured, we want to ensure our virtual user load is well distributed across the load injector servers. We will do this by calibrating our script by selecting the recommended VUD button, or VUD. Calibrating the script will run the script through one of our test servers to evaluate the execution scenario we've created and give us a recommendation of how many virtual users we should have per load injector server. Doing this takes the calculation or guesswork out of determining how many resources are needed. You can choose to use the recommended number of virtual users per load injector server, or you can specify how many virtual users you want per injector server on your own. Now let's take a quick look at our reports. The first thing to note is that we can download the report as well as download the raw data into a CSV file which will allow us to use or display the data however we wish. Here on the Summary Report tab we can see a graphical representation of our execution plan, average response time, and errors that occurred while executing our scenario. In the execution plan chart, what we see is the expected number of virtual users based on our execution plan versus the actual number of virtual users that came through during the test. If we see a larger deviation in the two numbers being plotted, we can tell there was an issue. The average response time chart. Depending upon the requirements of your test, the response time should stay within the threshold that you've determined before executing the testing scenario. If the response time increases rapidly as the number of concurrent virtual users grows, it is safe to assume your application will need more resources than it currently has available to handle a large load. Next, we can look at the total number of sessions started and the number of errors that occurred during the execution of the load test scenario. The last chart shows the load injector server load. 
This gives us an accurate representation of how this script performed in different regions of the world and how that impacts the performance of the load injector server that was running the test. From any of these charts, we can select a plot point to view more detailed information. From here, we can see every session that ran during that moment of our test. We can further drill down into even more details with a breakdown of every single element that loaded on the page during that session. To keep it brief, that is the load view platform configured for a load step test. Obviously, this is a quick overview and we have only begun to scratch the surface of the capabilities of the load view platform and its reporting features. As always, if you have any questions or if you would like to try a load test for yourself, please reach out to one of our account representatives.